Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of this project. Um, again, I do apologize because YouTube will only allow me to film 15 minute videos to post them. So sometimes my projects run into multiple parts. But anyway, welcome back. What we're going to be doing is, I've, since I've got everything cut, I've got all my grooves cut, but I'm kind of not happy with the way they're cut, meaning the saw blades. If you look down here, like this one here, you'll see that we've got a little bit of ridge. We've got some ridges here. So you got a ridge here and a ridge here. It looks like from a saw blade. Um, it's where they didn't get cut out completely. I'm kind of, you know, I really like the dado blade set, but at the same time, um, they do leave some ridges and I don't, I want it to be nice and flat. So like this one is very prominent. You can see that you can see those, those ridges right there. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking a chisel and just kind of chiseling off those ridges and then taking some sandpaper and sanding it down a little bit to make it flat. So what I'm doing is what I've what I've already done here and here is I've already taken a chisel and as Norm Abrams would say a nice sharp chisel and you know knocking down those ridges which I've already done here so I don't know if you can see this or not but you see there's a little ridge right there and if you just take the chisel nice and lightly you don't want to dig into the wood you just want to keep it flat and what we want to do is we just want to knock off that excess now I know some people may say well why don't you just use a sander well good luck getting a sander into this little space um, and again that's kind of why I've got this piece of wood and this piece of sandpaper is so once I'm done chiseling off the excess I can set this down and I can run it through back and forth until it's flatter but again I'm not quite done with the chisel here yet so uh, basically you just want to you just want to knock off the high ridges because again we want we want our piece our test piece to sit in there nice and flat we don't want any gaps in the bottom so if you look at this one right here you'll see that there's really hardly any gap there's no gap there's no gap so okay so at this point in the project we have our we have our frame built uh, I've done all the chiseling and sanding that I needed to I still have a little bit more sanding to do and that is with these shelf pieces um, it's actually a little tight to fit into this groove right here but if I just put it on the sander, shave off just a hair, I should be okay. But this is kind of what we're doing. So we're gonna put all these shelves, and I've only got three of them cut so far. I still have to chisel and sand these out, these grooves. Um, we're gonna just keep adding them, but I have to figure out a way to put this together in such a way because if I have my pieces going here vertically, I can nail these here and I can nail these here, but when I get to the next one, I can't get my nail gun in here. So I've got to think about this. And my idea was to maybe put together the bottoms, the bottom shelf, nail it from up here maybe put it get put together the next pieces in here and nail it from underneath and then set that in and then do the same thing with the other one 
and just keep stacking them on. So once I get to the end, then the only thing I have to shoot in are the tops. So, um, but this is where we're at so far. We've got our we've got our exterior frame. I've got three of these already cut. I've got some more to cut, and then I've got to cut all of the individual little pieces that go in between and there's going to be 90 of them so this is going to take a little while i will spare you all that okay so far this is as far as i've gotten uh i've got our first two sets of cubbies working on our third set uh, again these are the first two that i had cut i still have another one uh, that's already cut laying right here however i need to use this as a template for my remaining or remainder pieces that I need to mark and cut on the table saw. But this is what it looks like so far. So we've got all these sanded. I've been sanding it as I go. Um, the, uh, the verticals are straight, as straight as they can be. <clears throat> I know we do probably have some little gaps in here. Um, there's one right there. And again, I, like I said, we're going to try to make it gap free as much as possible. But all of these are pretty tight. And that's kind of what I was going for. Um, and that's why I did all the chiseling and all the sanding on these grooves. So if we were to look, that's what these That's what they're gonna look like sitting in there. So I think it's really gonna look cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue this by marking out my next set of shelves, cutting more of the vertical uprights, and hopefully I'll be able to show you some more um, as we go. I mean, that's how big it is. It's pretty high up there, so. Um, All right, so our cubby shelf for the monster truck is finally finished. It's all put together. It's been sanded, stained, clear coated. 
Uh, I mean, this thing is beautiful, if you ask me. But you don't have to ask me. You have your own opinion. Anyway, we've got it all done. Now it's just a matter of mounting it. Now with mounting it, I planned on using a French cleat. And for those of you who do not know what a French cleat is, it's basically two pieces of wood cut at a 45 degree angle. One mounts to the wall, the other one mounts to the shelf and you set it on there and it holds in place. Uh, they're actually very sturdy, very easy, and that's what I'm gonna be doing next. So that will likely be in part three as we make the cleat, the French cleat, hang the shelf, and actually put the monster trucks in it and showcase it. So stay tuned for that.